Hello everyone. Today we will be sewing bunnets. I have here a bunnet that I sewed for my one-year-old. On the inside it's a satin-like material. You can wear it inside or out but we usually wear with this satin on the inside. For this project you will need a yard of fabric if you're making this for like a baby or a newborn you may not need the entire yard you could probably get away with something smaller you will also need your silk like material to go inside of the bonnet you will also need a elastic band thread a pin and tape measure also, I have safety pins and sewing pins. Okay, so we will start by opening our fabric up, front side facing the ceiling, and we're gonna put the two pieces together, front sides facing each other. We're gonna flatten out that fold, and then what we're gonna do, we just folded it hot dog style and next we are going to fold it hamburger style so in that corner and you'll see it once I put it back down in that corner you want to see a fold that way and a fold that way that's the side that we will be working with we're basically going to make a circle next you will get your measuring tape and since this is for my one year old, I'm going to do 10 inches. Now I've done one that's 10 inches, 11 inches for me, even 12. Um, I've actually done a nine inch one for a newborn, but 10 inches is going to be perfect for my one year old. So you'll start by placing the measuring tape in the, in the corner with the fold. And I'm gonna get my pen and I'm going to mark 10 inches and what we're gonna do is basically we're going to go around moving it piece by piece we're gonna keep that beginning part of the tape measure in the corner and we're gonna work our way around marking 10 inches all the way around till we get to the other side of the fabric now, once you get used to doing this, you'll be able to mark it quicker. Um, sometimes I kind of just zip through it, and then if you want, you can go back and trace it um, like so. Next, you'll get your scissors, and you will cut out the line that you just drew. Okay, next we'll get our silky material. You'll notice that one side is kind of dull and the other side is glossy. So right now I'm just unfolding it so I can have enough to make that complete circle. Um, and you'll see the folded side once I get it open. All right, so you're just gonna take the piece that you already cut out and use it as a pattern. And you'll just cut around. And I usually make my silk material, um, I usually cut it out a little further than the other fabric, just because sometimes it's kind of hard to work with the silk. Next, you'll open your printed fabric and place it right side facing up. And then you're gonna get your silky material and you're gonna place it on top of the other fabric and you want the, the shiny side facing the printed side, so right sides facing. And I just flipped it over. Okay, so next I'm just gonna pin it in place. I stick four pins into the fabric. All 
All right, so the next part is optional, but I'm just trimming away some of the satin fabric. I still want it to stick out a little more than the top printed fabric just because it's easier to work with when I'm sewing. But once again, this is completely optional. We're going to take our measuring tape and measure one inch around the entire fabric. You want to make sure that the ruler stays on the printed fabric and not the satin because the satin does stick out a little further and so you don't want your um, seam allowances to be off. And so just make sure you stay on that top fabric. Once you're finished, you're just gonna go and sew around the line that you just created with your measuring tape. I do apologize. I set my phone on the table with my sewing machine and so my phone is just bouncing up and down with my sewing machine. And every now and then I will flip it over to check the other side just to make sure everything is still running smoothly. Okay, as you continue to sew around the circle, you don't want to go all the way to the point where you started. You do want to leave a opening about three finger spaces because we still have to flip the bunnet inside out. So do not sew to your starting point leave space once that's done you want to cut off the excess thread then don't forget to take your fabric pins out I put four in there because I can remember that number um, I can't count the times that I've forgotten about my pins and later stuck myself Before I go further, I am just going to cut off the excess fabric. Once again, this is not a necessary step. I just like to clean up my area just a little before I proceed. Be careful. You don't want to cut your thread. Okay, back to our opening. So I just stick my finger in here. I try to go all the way to the other edge and pull it out. You can pull it out, pop it out, shake it out. It usually comes out pretty decent as long as you leave enough space, okay? So I'm just working my way around the edges, just trying to pop out all of the creases the elastic band that I'm using is half an inch so for my seam allowance I'm just gonna go ahead and do an entire inch like we did earlier in the video so I'm just gonna go back around and mark one inch all the way around the bonnet
Once you finish your markings, you're going to go back to your sewing machine and basically just do a stitch around the entire bonnet again. This time you don't have to leave a space. You can go all the way um, to the point where you started and don't forget to backstitch. Okay, so once that's finished, you're just gonna get your scissors or you can use the thread coater on the machine, cut off the excess fabric. And now we're gonna get our elastic band. I am going to put a safety pin on one end. That way I can work it through the casing that I just made. Um, I'm going to put a clip on the other end of the elastic band just so I won't lose it and I'll still end up losing it in this video. Um, but you're just gonna work your way through the fabric until you get around the entire circle. Okay, so here's where I let the, well, I took the clip off and the elastic slipped, but I was able to catch it. And so you just grab the other piece and you pull them both out. Now I try to feel around the bunny to make sure it does not twist or um, get tangled up because it will. Um, you get it pulled out good enough and then you stick it under your sewing machine and you're gonna do a zigzag stitch and you're just gonna go back and forth a few times. Okay, so we're back at our little hole and we are going to hand stitch this. Now I usually do a invisible stitch um, or you could just do like a regular stitch. Um, but with the zigzag stitch or any stitch, you wanna make sure you tuck it in very well. And I make sure I tuck the satin part in first and then the printed side. The best way I could explain the invisible stitch is to go under the fabric first. Um, once you finally do that first stitch through the fabric and then I turn it around and I kind of just go on top of the fabric alternating sides. So as you can see right now, I'm starting on the satin side and then I go over to the printed side and you want to stay on top. If you guys need me to do a tutorial on a invisible stitch or any other thing that we have done thus far in the video, please let me know and I will do that video.
as we tie the knots and approach the end our bonnet is complete sometimes i'll put little bows on them but for the sake of this video i'll just stop right here okay and we have our bonnet I was able to get an impromptu photo of my daughter in her bonnet after I made it. I also have other photos of her sister with her in their bonnets. I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. Please like, comment, share. Also, let me know what I can do to improve my videos. Thank you and come again. Bye.